Hey guys, welcome to The Strong Young Man. It's natural for humans to compare ourselves to one another. An accurate comparison between individuals is what our prehistoric ancestors used to establish their position in the dominance hierarchy. An accurate and realistic understanding of an animal's status relative to others increases the chances that they survive and reproduce. And so it is that social comparison has been acquired through natural selection over 600 million years and is embedded deep into the reptilian brain. We will always be comparing ourselves to others, noting any differences between what others have and what we have. If someone possesses something that we don't have but have a deep desire for, especially something that is fundamental to our position in any dominance hierarchy, that reptilian brain elicits a painful emotion to drive us to obtain what we covet. This painful emotion is called envy and it can poison your soul if you allow it to. In fact, envy can be so toxic that Moses recognised its potential for destruction and listed it as the 10th commandment in the book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 17. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbour's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbour's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbour's. The propensity to compare ourselves to others becomes dangerous if we allow ourselves to feel entitled to what this person has. Feeling entitled to the spoils of another will eventually develop into malicious envy. A malicious envier secretly hopes that the person they envy fails when they are trying to undertake something new. They can't bear the thought of another success, which can bring the envy more status, wealth, happiness and independence. The extremely toxic forms of malicious envy will see the envier attempt to sabotage the envied even at the envier's own cost. At the very least, sabotage will cost the envier mental exertion and time, which could be put to better use. At the very worst, sabotage could cost the envier life in jail or even their life full stop. There is in the garden a plant which one ought to leave dry, although most people water it. It is the weed called envy, Cosimo de' Medici. Understand that envy is a consequence of our own insecurities combined with hostility. The more insecure and aggressive we are, the more we are prone to envy. To admit to envy is to admit that others have it better than us, which is to admit that we are in a lower position in any particular dominance hierarchy. This is something that is often impossible for the insecure to confront. As painful as this emotion is to admit to ourselves, it's even more painful to have others see us experiencing this emotion. Overt displays of envy are socially unacceptable, and so it is often repressed or dismissed in favour of a lesser defect. Of all the disorders in the soul, envy is the only one no one confesses to, Plutarch. Everyone experiences envy, and you yourself are not immune. If you've ever hated on celebrities or gossiped about friends, then this was your envy expressing itself. To immunise yourself against the malicious forms of envy, you must first understand and accept that social comparison is natural. Going back to first principles, your envy is an emotion that should spur you into achieving excellence. You can allow the painful emotion of envy to poison you or to nourish you. What a squandering of this dark energy to use this useful emotion to engage in poisonous sabotage. Instead, use the energy behind envy to drive you to obtain what you covet. I want you to embrace the pain that you feel when you see someone who has something that you want. I want it to bother you enough that you aspire to achieve your deepest desires. You have identified that someone has something that you want, now identify what you have to do to actualize this. This is called benign envy and it can be extraordinarily useful. Benign envy is still a negative emotion in the sense that it feels unpleasant, but this is good. Every emotion has a biological function that promotes survival and the biological function of envy is to drive you to obtain more rather than to take away what another person has. It requires humility because you need to recognise that others have it better than you and that you should be doing something to improve your position on the dominance hierarchy. Having a sense of purpose or a calling in life is a great way to immunise yourself against envy. You are focused on your own life and plans which will keep you distracted from others, moderating your envy. In addition to this, climbing up any hierarchy of competence will diminish your envy. This is because there are less people worth coveting and you'll feel less envy of successful people in general. Having said this, you must expose yourself to people with more than you if you want to climb higher up any dominance hierarchy. This is a part of networking and it should be encouraged. If you constantly expose yourself to people higher up on the dominance hierarchy and you find your malicious envy is beginning to express itself, then you need to make a conscious effort to not compare yourself to others. This habit is hard because it goes against our evolved biology, but like anything, it can be developed with practice. Here are some ways you can shift your mindset to moderate your envy. 1. Understand that people are not what they seem. Often we develop our envy based on the lives people project on social media, which is largely idealised. 2. Compare yourself to who you were yesterday rather than who someone else is today. 3. Develop your self-worth from internal standards and not incessant comparisons. 4. Focus on what you have rather than what you do not have. 5. The opposite of envy is gratitude and you must be grateful for what you have over other people. Because you are watching this, that means that there are many more people less fortunate than you. If you focus on people who have less than you, then overall, you'll possess less envy. 
This one is also hard because we have a propensity to notice people higher on the dominance hierarchy preferentially over people lower on the dominance hierarchy. As you become more successful, be aware of the increasing envy in others. Envy follows the successful around wherever they go. We see this with people who are famous. They are open to overt and covert envy attacks from the public. Your failure to understand this will make the envy directed towards you more profound. This is especially important for young men who are successful. They haven't experienced much envy themselves and they are unable to understand this emotion at all. Unaware of the dangers, they fragrantly display their talents and evoke even stronger feelings of envy in others. I'm not saying don't fragrantly display your talents, just understand that in doing so, you will increase the intensity of people's envy. Be aware of this and regulate your bearing towards others accordingly. Failure to understand this will mean that you expose yourself to sabotage, which could see you lose everything that you have worked so hard to achieve. The most common types of envy are envy of status, envy of ability, envy of money, envy of intelligence, envy of success, envy of youth, envy of physical appearance, and envy of relationships. Multiple types of envy can be triggered by the same person, yielding a stronger response. Envy actually occurs most commonly and painfully among friends and peers of the same profession. The closer someone gets to you, the worse their envy becomes, as they are increasingly reminded of what you have over them. Malicious enviers will often want to get close in order to engage in sabotage. Sabotage is their method for obtaining cosmic justice for your success and also revenge for evoking painful emotions in them. By getting closer to us, our enemies can discover our insecurities and play the cards that wreak the most havoc. Their sabotage is likely to be subtle and indirect in order to maintain the friendship so they can continue to inflict harm. Because envy is something that very few will ever admit to, it is extremely hard to detect. Due to the toxicity, envy has learned to disguise it, but there are warning signs if you're observant. You must identify people who are envious of you to neutralize their envy. Doing this can prevent a malicious envy attack years before it happens. The best method for detecting envy in others is to observe micro-expressions and non-verbal communication that people continuously leak out. Remember from episode 74 that sudden squinting of the eyes or a small frown in conversation indicates envy or hostility towards you. Note that the word envy actually comes from the Latin phrase invadere, which means to see into. Arthur Schopenhauer devised the following strategy to detect envy in others. Tell the suspected envious some good news about yourself, a promotion, a new and exciting love interest, a book contract. You will notice a very quick expression of hostility followed by an insincere smile. Their tone of voice as they congratulate you will betray some tension and strain. Equally, tell them some misfortune of yours and notice the uncontrollable micro-expression of joy in your pain, what is commonly known as schadenfreude. Their eyes light up for a fleeting second. People who are envious cannot help feeling some sort of glee when they hear of the bad luck of the people they envy. If you see such looks in the first few encounters of someone, be on the lookout for a dangerous envier entering your life. Other signs of envy include disparaging comments, poisonous praise, subtle digs at you under the guise of good-natured humour, uncomfortability with your successes, advice intended to lead you into making a mistake, and gossiping about you. If you observe many of these traits in an individual multiple times, be warned, this person is toxic. It's foolish to imagine you can repair this relationship. Your humility in forgiving the envier will only further remind them that you are more virtuous than they are, which will only intensify their envy. Do anything you can to dissociate with them. There are ways in which your awareness of an envier can be used and manipulated to your advantage, but this is difficult and highly variable and dependent on the situation and the individual. It's far better to just avoid the envier at all costs. Their association is just not worth it. Unfortunately, this is not always possible. You can't just move workplaces every time you identify an envier. If you experience success in your field, those who have similar aspirations but are still struggling will naturally feel envious. Sometimes even your superiors will envy your youth, vigour and the signs of your talent. This is just a part of being successful. Some enviers are harmless, but for others, their envy will become active. Because you can't dissociate from everyone, in the interest of self-preservation, you must manage passive and active enviers. Here's how to do it. Technique number one, reflection. You can reflect the envy that other people feel for you by focusing on the talents of others. Display great interest in their work and seek their advice on semi-important matters. This will benefit you in the following two ways. Firstly, it diverts the envier away from attacking you. And secondly, it directs the envier towards someone else, which will give them an emotional outlet to relieve themselves. Technique number two, deflection. You can deflect the envy that others feel for you by playing down your own talents. You can do this by attributing your success to luck and revealing your own insecurities, shortcomings and failures. If you are skilled in one area, reveal a weakness that you have in another area. If people discover the truth, that you are more talented than you look, then they will appreciate you more for your modesty. Never be so foolish to believe that you are stirring up admiration by flaunting the qualities that raise you above others. 
By making others aware of their inferior position, you are only stirring up unhappy admiration. Appear lesser than you are and you will reduce the envy that others feel for you. The more talented you are, the harder you will have to work at this. Another way that you can deflect envy is to admit your mistakes openly and shamelessly. In doing this, you have confirmed for others that you are not so perfect, which will reduce the envy towards you. Never boast of any success. If you post heaps on social media, then you open yourself up to envy as you are often posting the idealized form of your experiences. Finally, as a deflection strategy, you can make better friends. Deflect to new friends who are more successful than you. This will mean the people who could be envious of you are no longer around you. If you are under an envy attack, control your emotions. Remember that they envy you for a reason. Your success is their pain. Allow this to comfort you and this will become much easier for you to not take their envy personally. Recognize and be grateful for what you have over them. Recognize that you are the fucking man and you are higher than them on the dominance hierarchy. Better yet, become greater, more popular, successful or famous and take joy knowing that you are intensifying their misery every time they hear of your success. Once the envier has revealed their envy towards you, you must get as far away from them and as soon as possible. If possible, cut ties completely using the strategies outlined in episode 71. These people are toxic to you and having them around can plague you long into the future. No need to exact revenge on these people for their envy. Understand that this characteristic of theirs will cause them chronic unhappiness, and this is punishment enough. Leave them alone to stew in their misery. Thanks for watching today's episode. In episode 96, I'll be talking about lust. Subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified when it drops. Catch you then.